our latest update prevents iframes from being loaded unless the user accepts cookies. Good, now what does all of that mean and why do we need this in the first place? So far, the FinSuite cookie consent was doing what it's supposed to do. If the user rejected cookies, the FinSuite cookie consent blocked cookies from being issued. However, if there was an iframe embedded on the page, cookies from the iframe would still get to the user's browser. That is over now, luckily. We can now add category attributes to our iframes the same way we did with third-party scripts. If website visitors accept cookies, they'll be able to see the iframe. If they reject cookies, they won't see the iframes. Or if we want, we can show them a placeholder instead. Here's how we're going to set this up. In step one, we're going to create a placeholder that users will see until they accept cookies. In step two, we're going to add a few magic attributes to our embeds to make the whole thing work. And in step three, we're going to publish our site. We are going to start by creating a placeholder. This placeholder will be visible if a website visitor does not accept cookies. This step is optional. If you don't make a placeholder, the iframe will be hidden unless the visitor accepts cookies. We're going to position our placeholder on top of the iframe. We'll do this by selecting the parent element of the embed, in this case the embed wrapper, and we'll set the element's position to relative. Then we're going to drop in a div block, which is going to serve as our placeholder. We'll set the position of the placeholder to absolute. We're going to fast forward the footage now while I'm designing the placeholder. You can design the placeholder any way you want. You can drop in images, text fields, slot the animations, whatever you like. Once you're happy with the design, it's time to move to our next step. Let's open our embed and start adding attributes to our iframe. First, we're going to prepend fscc to the source attribute so that it reads fscc src. Next, it's time to bind the placeholder with our iframe. We're going to start by adding the attribute fscc placeholder. We have two options now. We can either use the placeholder class or the ID as the value of our attribute. In my case, I gave the placeholder a class of placeholder. Therefore, I can set the value to dot placeholder. If I wanted to use the element's ID, I'd have to give an ID to the element and then I'd write hash ID. The last thing we're going to do here is add category attributes. Just like we did in the past with third-party scripts, we're going to add an attribute of fscc category and we'll set the value to one of the following categories, analytics, marketing, or personalization. If the cookies from this iframe fall into multiple categories, you can also use the attribute fscc categories and separate the categories with commas. That's it. You can hit save and publish your project. Note that if you're having several iframes on your page, you'd have to create a placeholder for each item. In that case, each placeholder should have a unique class or ID. All right. Let's now see what our published project looks like. As you can see, if all the cookies are rejected, we're not seeing any iframes on our site. Accepting a cookie category loads the iframes on the site instantly. If we click on accept all, we can see that all of our iframes get loaded. Thanks for watching. Check out more FinSuite videos to keep learning Webflow.